This is Nick. This is Jack. It's Tuesday, T-Boy Tuesday, October 11th, and today's pod is the best one yet. It's It's a a T-Boy today. It's a T-Boy, Jack. Jack, what's our first story for the TBO? Kanye West's Twitter account has been locked again, and his Instagram post was just taken down. We got to explain what Kanye said and how tech responded. For our second story, Netflix just made one of the most surprising moves of the year. Netflix is dropping their next movie. Wait, am I reading this right? Is this uh, in a movie theater? In movie theaters. In the movie theater. Our third and final story, the Nobel Prize for Economics goes to Ben Bernanke, his beard, and a whole bunch of banks. But Yetis, before we hit that wonderful mix. It's the perfect mix for a T-Boy Tuesday. I love this mix, man. Can I start you off with a barking breakfast ball? Jack, can I interest you in the Chihuahua Chia Pudding? Those both sound great. Can I have both? Uh, no, we can't have either, man. Get this, Yetis. The newest restaurant in San Francisco is only for dogs. Besties, the newest cafe in San Francisco, it's only for collies. We're talking about the Dog Bistro for dogs called dog. Now, we should point out, it's spelled D-O-G-U-E, like it thinks it's a pastry chef, but it's for your puppy. It is fancy. They serve dog chinos for five bucks. Yeah, and they got themselves a patisserie oven right in the back. Right over here. But this isn't a restaurant. This is a fine dining establishment. Besties, this is a gourmet dinner for your great Dane. It's a Michelin starred meal for your Maltese. Because dog isn't serving regular dog food. Dog is serving $75 prefix tasting menu experience experiences for your dog. We're talking three courses of rotating seasonal dishes for your dog. All dogs do go to heaven. $75 to pamper your pooch like the super mutt she is, Nick. That's not water in that bowl, Jack. That's schlock. What's dish number one? Jack, that would be the organic beef with a fermented beet side dish for your dog. Followed by chaga mushroom soup with grass-fed chicken skin waffles for your dog. But Jack, what's going to finish off this prefix deluxe meal? Definitely not chocolate mousse. Yeah, it's not going to be a double chocolate mousse. Is there a caviar course for my corgi? Waiter, is there a raw bar for my Rottweiler? If the Chardonnay isn't chilled, (laughs) then Patty the Poodle is going to send that thing back. So Jack, what's the takeaway for our buddies over at the first prefix dog-focused restaurant? Because... Puppy. P-U-P-P-Y. People ultimately prioritize puppy. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> well, it's in our three stories. 15 years before this song, two boys from the Northeast met in the dorm. They had an idea to cause a cultural storm. It's the best one yet, but the best is the norm. Jack, Nick, that's it. I don't even think they need to practice. 50%, that's a fat tip. T-Boy City on your at list. If you know, you know, because we ready to go. We can't wait no more, so just start the show. Start the show. For our first story, over the weekend, Kanye West's Instagram and Twitter accounts were both restricted. But the Kanye drama shows what Twitter 2.0 will look like under Elon. Okay, Jack, we really should whip up the play-by-play. Here's the play-by-play of Kanye's week of antics that just finished. All right, where did this kick off, Jack? Where did we go? Paris Fashion Week. Last week... Kanye wore a shirt that said White Lives Matter at the Paris Fashion Week. Okay, again, Kanye West, a black man wearing a White Lives Matter shirt at Paris Fashion Week. White Lives Matter was first coined in 2015 in response to the Black Lives Matter movement. Well, on Thursday, Kanye West decided to reveal why he wore that White Lives Matter shirt. He told... Tucker Carlson on Fox News that he thought it would be a funny thing to do. But then Kanye West revealed that he also plans to sell those White Lives Matter shirts. As Kanye put it in a screenshot that he tweeted out, nobody can get in between me and my money. Okay, that was that was just part one of this like three or four parter here. Jack, part two, kick us off on Friday. Friday night, Kanye posted a screenshot of a text conversation on Instagram. The conversation was with Diddy. Diddy, Diddy. Puff Daddy wanted to talk to Kanye because he had some issues with the White Lives Matter shirt. Puff Daddy said in this text message that we all saw that his White Lives Matter shirt was hurting black people. So then Kanye decided to kick things up a notch on Diddy, Jack? Kanye accused Diddy of only wanting to talk to Kanye because Jewish people told him to. So then, to be more offensive, Kanye ended the conversation with the words, this is war. So Instagram deleted that post, deleted the whole presence of the text conversation because it was full of anti-Semitic words. Which then leads to part three, Kanye turning to Twitter. On Saturday, Kanye tweeted, when I wake up, I'm going DEFCON 3 on Jewish people. 
Jewish people with all caps. He actually wrote those terrible things. Now, at this point, feels like you don't need a part four. Yeah, this is a clear case of hate speech according to any rules, but definitely according to Twitter and Instagram's rules. Ipso facto, Jack, what were the results? What did the tech platforms do uh, like immediately after? Kanye's posts were removed and his Twitter account was locked. Now, to sprinkle on some context here, Kanye was not deplatformed like Trump was. He was just locked out of Twitter. Because according to Twitter's rules, you're not allowed to threaten or advocate violence on the basis of race, ethnicity, or other groups of people. Now, Yetis, this isn't just a story about the terrible things Kanye said last week. It's also a story about the future of tech platforms. Nick, we've seen, unfortunately, lots of instances of hate speech and deleted posts already. Yeah, we have. We have. But Kanye's week-long drama reveals something new about social media, too. So, Jack, what's the takeaway for all our buddies in the social media industry? We just got a preview of Twitter 2.0. The laws of Elon. Besties, the way Jack and I see this, Kanye's drama gives us a glimpse into the future of Twitter. The future controlled by Elon Musk. And that future was revealed in one more tweet yeah. that didn't get nearly as much attention as Kanye's deleted post that got taken down. Get this, after Instagram removed Kanye's post, Kanye tweeted at Mark Zuckerberg asking him like, hey, why'd you do this? That's when Elon Musk literally entered the chat. Literally. He replied to Kanye's tweet saying, Welcome back to Twitter, my friend. Let that sink in, Yetis. The future owner and possible CEO of Twitter simply said, welcome back to Kanye. The tech platforms police hate speech, but Elon has said that he's going to be way more hands-off when he's leading Twitter. In yeah, the so in Elon's Twitter, Kanye's anti-Semitic posts, they may just stay up there. So we just got a preview of what Twitter's future looks like under Elon Musk. Twitter 2.0, the laws of Elon. For our second story, Netflix just made its very first move to get off the couch, take off the pajamas. It's, it's decouching itself. Netflix. Netflix's biggest movie of the year is going to theaters before it goes to streaming. Okay, Jack, a little T-Boy Tuesday trivia. You want to play a little T-Boy Tuesday trivia? You ready to go? You ready to go, man? Go. Okay. Jack, what is the only Daniel Craig movie where he doesn't take his shirt off. The one where he's also not wearing skimpy bathing suit. Have you seen that man's pecs? It's absolutely insane. It's incredible. Yetis, we're talking about Knives Out, a murder mystery whodunit with enough twist to make you herniate your disc. Jack, I saw that movie. I went to a chiropractor afterwards. <laughs> this thing had me twitching. I didn't expect any of that. Knives Out, one of the biggest films of 2019. Nick and I loved it. We did. Well, the executives over at Netflix, they loved it too, Jack. Yeah, Netflix saw that movie and they thought to themselves, the F word. Uh, the F word. Franchise. franchise. <laughs> they want to franchise this thing. <laughs> so they spent $450 million for the rights to make more of these movies. Okay, so Yetis, if you want to see the sequel to Knives Out, which was bought by Netflix and they produced it, it's coming out soon. It's coming out in December. December 23rd. You can watch it home on Netflix on the app, in your boxers, with your leftover lasagna on your lap, if you want. But Jack, let me stop you right there. Because if you watch Knives Out sequel with that leftover lasagna <laughs> on your lap in December, <laughs> you're gonna be late. You're gonna be late. Because Netflix's Knives Out sequel, which is called Glass Onion. It doesn't make sense. It actually comes out first in theaters. Yeah, you sit down, stand up, and sit back down again. Netflix's biggest movie of the year is coming out at AMC, Regal Cinemas, and Cinemark before Netflix. It's a one-week in-theater exclusive that Netflix is calling a sneak peek. And now, Jack and I should point out that Netflix has shown a couple of its artsy films in a few theaters to be eligible for the Oscars. Best foreign film. It goes to Netflix. But this news means Netflix is prioritizing theater with their best movie of the year. We repeat, all three major movie chains are going to be showing a Netflix movie before Netflix does over Thanksgiving week. That's a big week. For Thanksgiving week. A great week for movies. Yeah, you don't want to see your family. You want to go to the movies. You want to burn off those calories in the comfort of a recliner. No, Jack, you don't want to see your family. We all know what you're talking about here. Now, yeah, I didn't, You said that. <laughs> I, didn't say, I didn't say it. I'm just reading the room. I'm reading the room. Now, besties, full disclosure, Jack and I have not seen this new Knives Out movie yet, but Jack and I do have a spoiler to share. Theaters have the murder weapon. This is not a good sign that Netflix is doing this. Netflix is making this move not out of strength, but out of weakness. Because Netflix's stock, it's actually like the worst performing stock in the S&P 500 this year. The stock is down 60%. And this is a sign 
that Netflix is desperate for growth and needs help from the industry that it disrupted 10 years ago. Jack, this is like if Tesla added a tank for gasoline in its car. This is like if Oatly came with a side of meatball. This is like if Netflix called up Blockbuster and said, hey, what are you doing? What do you think, Squid Game, DVD, Blu-ray? Should we make this happen? So, Jack, what's the takeaway for our buddies over at Netflix? 2022 is the year Netflix stopped being Netflix. 2022, the very first time in Netflix history that they've actually lost subscribers. That's unprecedented. Ever since they invented streaming in 07, it's been growth all the time. Well, Jack, and I should also point out that a few years ago, CEO Reed Hastings also said he would never do advertising on Netflix. But this year, Netflix is adding an ad-supported option. Coming soon. And Jack and I once said that Netflix should buy a movie theater chain because Netflix said they would never do it. Well, launching their top movie of the year in movie theaters only is the next closest thing. When Netflix started shrinking, it just wasn't the same Netflix anymore. Given that, it's actually awesome to see a CEO who's willing to change his mind. Pretty cool that the CEO did a 180, Jack. But 2022, it's still the year that Netflix stopped being Netflix. Now, a word about our sponsor, Robinhood. A lot of Yetis don't realize how much prep work goes into this pod. We spend hours every morning jumping in T-Boy style to earnings reports, CEO tweets, breaking news headlines. Yeah, Jack and I are toggling tabs like you toggled IM convos in 2004. Having eight tabs open can be stressful. You don't need that especially when invested. Robinhood offers it all in one app. Whether you want to trade options, ETFs, or stocks through Robinhood Financial, or you want to buy some Bitcoin on Robinhood Crypto, you can do it all on the Robinhood app. If you're not investing in Robinhood yet, to get started, go to Robinhood.com slash T-Boy and choose your free stock. That's Robinhood.com slash T-B-O-Y. Limitations apply. Robinhood Financial LLC, member SIPC. All investments involve risk. By the way, this podcast is not owned or part of Robinhood. and We are not employees of Robinhood. For our third and final story, envelope please, the envelope please, and the Nobel Prize in economics goes to La La Land. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. I misread it. I misread it. It's Ben Bernanke. Ben Bernanke wins the Nobel Prize in economics. It's gone to Ben Bernanke. Ben Bernanke, the great bearded banker. Yes. Ben's finding was incredibly simple. It was. But incredibly powerful. We should sprinkle on a little aesthetic context here. Famous facial hair. Who you got? Tom Selleck. Okay. The Lorax. Colonel Sanders for the chin hair. <laughs> I think Colonel Sanders has a full face, doesn't he? It doesn't seem to stop from his sideburns <laughs> to his beard. In the meantime, you've also got Ben Bernanke, who in 1979 got a PhD from MIT in economics for finance, not finance. That was 1979. Good pronunciation. Four years later, Ben wrote a paper. He studied the Great Depression in the United States from way back in the 1930s. Now, Yetis, if you think our economy is uh, is bad right now, in, in this, this economy? economy, well, I'll sprinkle on a little more context, Jack. During the Great Depression, the unemployment rate was 25%. 25%. One out of four potential working American adults was out of work. Jack, what is the unemployment rate today? Three and a half percent. There's only one out of 30 workers looking for a job. Today. So that's when Ben Bernanke in 1979 whipped up this thesis in this thesis paper. Ben believed that the banking sector caused the Great Depression to last so long. Because the Great Depression with that 25% unemployment, it lasted for 10 years. That paper that Ben wrote 43 years ago in grad school, guess what? It won the Nobel Prize yesterday. That paper won the Nobel Prize. There is no statute of limitations. 43 years later, it finally paid off. You get the A. That's like more than the A+. plus. We actually, though, have to flash forward because it paid off before yesterday. Okay, Yetis. Now let's go to 2008. Ben Bernanke has grown up, gone on to become the chairman of the Federal Reserve of the United States. That's right. Before Jerome Powell and Janet Yellen, we had big old bearded Ben. Yeah, less Santa Claus. Picture more Chuck Norris with a little bit of salt and pepper. And on his watch, the 2008 financial crisis hit. And that is when Ben's beard started buzzing. So Jack, what's the takeaway for our buddy, Ben Bernanke of the Federal Reserve? The real reason Ben got the prize he realized that banks are the bedrock. All right, Yetis, now let's go backward. 2008 financial crisis. It really began when people were lent homes that they couldn't afford to buy in the first place. Banks made a bunch of bad mortgages to people who couldn't pay back those loans. Now, here's where things get interesting. When things started falling apart, Ben's first move as the head of the Federal Reserve wasn't to fix houses 
It was to save banks. It was super unpopular at the time, but his priority was a bank rescue program, not helping people or helping paychecks. And here was Ben's insight. He knew that if banks stopped banking, then a recession would become a depression. We escaped the 08 financial crisis with less pain because we saved the banks. And that is why Ben Bernanke just got the Nobel Prize over a decade later. He realized banks were the bedrock. And he put it to the test when the stakes couldn't be higher. And it was all based on an old paper. Jack, can you spell out that puppy acronym for us one more time and whip up the takeaways for us over there? Kanye's White Lives Matter shirt led to anti-Semitism and to his Twitter account getting locked. But it also led to a preview of Twitter 2.0, The Laws of Elon. For our second story, Netflix is debuting the Knives Out sequel in theaters. Yeah, here's our review. 2022, that's the year Netflix stopped being Netflix. Our third and final story, former Fed chairman Ben Bernanke, the bearded one, just won the Nobel Prize of Economics. Because he realized banks are the bedrock of our economy. Now time for the best fact yet. This one sent in by Jenny Gallagher over in Culver City, California. Push and play. Here we go. Hey, Jack and Nick. I have a great fact about how Nike got started. The company was founded on January 25th, 1964 as Blue Ribbon Sports. The company takes its name from a dream Literally, Nike is the Greek goddess of victory. And an employee had a dream about this goddess the night before a big pitch meeting back in 1971, and it stuck. Okay, Yetis, full disclosure, every takeaway Jack and I do, we get from a dream. <laughs> if you have a dream, mention it at the pitch meeting. If you have a nightmare... Keep it to yourself. Half of this pod preparation is us sleeping. Yeah, those NyQuil bottles. Yeah, Jack. The melatonin. It's a corporate expense. All right, now it's on the record. Now it's on the record. <laughs> Yetis, you look fantastic today. And remember, if you're watching a show this evening with a lasagna on your lap, honestly, no judgments. We love you for it. And if you're wondering when you'll get credit for that paper you wrote 43 years ago, hang in there. Because you'll get credit for it while you're eating lasagna. Nick and I, we'll see you tomorrow. Can't wait. And before we go, congrats to a couple of Yetis, Jill and Noah, who just got engaged in front of the Wake Forest Chapel down in Winston-Salem. And happy anniversary to Hideki Saruga from Tokyo, Japan. But he got married four years ago in front of New York City's City Hall. And congratulations on the nine-year anniversary to Zach and Mindy Hughes in lovely Haines City, Florida. And congratulations to Jake Miller, who got a new job in Denver, which also does logistics, apparently. But Jack, how about Vicente Manuelos, who also got a new job, also in logistics, but in Chicago. Chicago and Denver. Yeah. Do logistics. And a happy birthday to Shashwat Patel over in Orange County, California. And happy birthday to Ryan Beckham in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And Linda Change, it's her birthday while she's running with the East Silver Spring Elementary School Pandas. It's a birthday. And happy birthday to Chris Shaw in Marlboro, New Jersey. And Mo Taylor, the Bayou Boy Peloton King of Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Happy birthday. And a big T-Boy happy birthday to Felicity Enos, who's turning one in Nashville, Tennessee. And hasn't missed a single T-Boy episode even while she was in utero. And to anyone else celebrating something today, make it a T-Boy. Celebrate the wins. This is Jack. I own stock of Netflix and Nick and I both own stock of Peloton and Robinhood. Now, a word about our sponsor, Robinhood. A lot of you listen to our show while you're driving. Two hands on the wheel. Keep it 10 and 2. You might be cruising, Chris. No rush. Stay in the right lane. Or you might be Darlene from Duncan. Dotting from lane to lane. Yeah, there are different drivers on the road. There are different investors, too. Maybe you're cruising down the long-term lane with stock investing, or maybe you're a more advanced full-speed trader. Well, the Robinhood app helps put you in the driver's seat wherever you're at in your investing journey. If you're not investing on Robinhood yet, to get started, go to Robinhood.com slash T-Boy and choose your free stock. That's Robinhood.com slash T-B-O-Y. Limitations apply. Robinhood Financial LLC, member SIPC. All investments involve risk. By the way, this podcast is not owned by or part of Robinhood, and we are not employees of Robinhood.